Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on an Okuma reel. It is the Okuma Metalloid. It's the 5NS. It's a small format lever drag reel that, well, it has a problem that seems like it, it seems to be a problem with a lot of these reels. When you drop it in a free spool, the handle still turns. So uh, that usually means that there's just a lot of dirt and grease inside or your free spool adjuster has been uh, mis- uh, um, misaligned. Now we're going to take this reel apart. We'll show you how it's made. We'll show you a little bit about how to service the reel, how to keep it running for some time to come. I did notice uh, this was dropped off. I did notice that uh, there was a lot of salt build up around the screws. You can see it as I, I pull it out on this first one. That uh, well, I think it gets hosed off after usage, but it hasn't been cleaned in a while, and that salt is kind of settled in the cracks and crevices, and it does that because, well, they're, uh, it's, they're micro salts. They're uh, very fine, and uh, well, you just can't see them, and sometimes hosing it down just won't help. I always recommend occasionally take your reel, put it in a bucket of water, and uh, submerge the whole reel. That'll help to dissolve any of the salts that may have gotten into some of these, these areas. Okay, well, we're going to take this off first thing I notice is that the screw is a reverse threaded screw. That means it comes out as if you were normally tightening it, that is turning it clockwise. Well, while I remove the screw, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, you please use that notification button to uh, let you know when I'm posting new videos. And of course, if you like the video, please uh, like the video as well. That helps with uh, my views and the like. All right, there's a little bit of dirt and debris on there, but we've removed that. We should be able to, to rock up and out on the handle and get that off. These are always tough when they, uh, when they kind of accumulate like that. Let's see if it's a... This, this handle probably screws off. Okay, well just looking quickly, it does screw off. Turn that into reverse mode. Here's more evidence of that uh, salt buildup and the like. When I take my pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray so I know where to find them. I use the bottom of a fast food container. This little shield will come off next. And that's really all you have to do on this, on this side of it, if you will. I'm going to try and attack the, uh, uh, the gear side plate now. I'm going to start by removing that preset adjuster. And as I mentioned, sometimes when you don't go into free spool, it's a matter that the uh, pivots don't line up between the two. All right. It's got a lot of thread on it. There we go. And by pivots, I mean there's a valley in this side, and there's ramps on this side. Sometimes they get out of alignment for whatever reason. And when they do, they don't operate the right way. I'm going to um, just hit that a little bit. So what happens in a neutral position is that the valleys here and the peaks here are together. That's uh, the least amount of uh, pressure you're going to have on it. As you pull it, it's going to pull up on this ramp. It's going to pull in on the spool and it's going to connect the pressure plate and the drag washer. And that's what's going to give you the variability. The more you pull up, the more it's going to uh, connect. And that's going to drive the, uh, the tension on your drag washer. All right, I'm using a little uh, palm driver here with a Torx screw bit. This is a 10 Torx, if you're wondering which size it is. And again, I had to spray these screws down before I got started because there was an awful lot of uh, salt built up on them. I like to keep my tools at hand. Things like this, just you can't predict them, but they happen where sometimes the screw gets stuck coming out, and that's usually because of the, uh, the salt build up around that hole. And uh, well, instead of doing anything crazy, I just use my micro pliers. And if uh, somebody had asked me what the indispensable tools are in my shop, this would be right up there among the top, uh, top pieces. 
I put those three screws on my desk first to make sure that they're all the same. They are. And I think we should be able to remove the case now. I'm not seeing any connectors below. And we can uh, pull that up. Okay. This is your gear side. I see a lot of dirt in there, so that's probably contributing to this. And then we have our spool side, which uh, we will service first. We're going to remove that first. You have your, oh, there you go. That's a piece of the issue right there. We have a uh, broken line that's probably stopping the axle from coming. Somehow all that line got trapped in there. That'll, that'll make it run pretty poorly. Look at that. Build a whole bird's nest out of this one. Wow. Sort of like me when I'm trying to cast a, a new reel for the first time. I generally cast... Uh, look at that. Well, I, if somebody told me that much line was sitting in there, I probably would find that hard to believe. Well, evidence of what's gone wrong with this reel. I generally... Uh, oh almost lost that too. There's a spring that goes on there. So just take your pictures as you're uh, working on your reel to make sure that you, uh, well, you notice all of your orientations of pieces and parts and that you uh, have a reference for when it's time to put them back together again. Now on this reel, I did go out to the internet. I was able to find the schematic. It was available at realschematic.com and uh, it, it gives me a, a look into what I'm going to be working on. So if you're ever curious about well, what's the mechanics behind the reel, what, uh, what's the design, what are the pieces and parts that I'm likely to see, all of those things can be answered in a schematic. And I encourage you before you start to go ahead and get that done. We're going to continue on the spool. I think we found the issue with why the performance is so poor that out of the way before it becomes a problem with somebody else's reel. There's two screws on the back here that are holding the axle shaft assembly in place, so we'll take them off next. Again, put the screws on the table. It's just a good practice. I'm sure 99 out of 100 times those two screws are going to be the same. One never knows. All right, we should be able to remove the collar now, and then we can pull out our axle shaft. The axle shaft has a bearing and a series of tension washers on it. It's held in by a C-clip. You don't need to do anything with that. You have a little uh, plastic ring that goes on the outside of that. Those tension washers are, I believe they're called Belleville washers. They're, they're concave or convex on the, I guess probably on which side you're looking at it on. And uh, those washers provide some variability in the way that the drag system lever applies pressure. Just oil the bearing. I oil bearings, I don't grease them. This one's got a shield, but it's not sealed, so the oil will seep in there. You want to take your cloth or something, make sure that the cavity is clean. There's a bearing on the other side of this. I'm just going to push that out right now. We're going to do the same thing going to oil that bearing and we can reinstall. Remember there is a plastic washer that goes on the top of this and we can set that into the case just like that. We can bring our collar back on, go to our parts tray and get those other two screws that we just took out. Well, while I'm doing this, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're I mean, running into some difficulty somewhere, leave that question in the comments section. I will see if I can help you through that. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. But uh, if you're looking for an assist, uh, well, I'll try my, try my best. I generally answer the comments section first thing in the morning before I get in the shop doing videos. So if you're leaving a comment in the evening, uh, this isn't a 24 by 7 service, but I do try to help. All right, take that bearing that we just had on this side and push that back in. <clears throat> this, uh, this drag washer is in good condition. You can see the cross hatching throughout. You don't need to do anything. If you did see that there was 
an accumulation of dirt and debris, take a hard brush like a toothbrush or, or one of these fabric bristle brushes, just pull it through, pull out the old grease. Generally you would want to do that on a paper towel so it doesn't harm your uh, working area. And uh, as soon as you can see those cross hatches, you're good. If you can't see the cross hatches because of wear, you're going to need to replace that. That was the spring that came off the shaft. And now we can just take the whole assembly here and we can put that back into the, the T fitting on the other side of the frame. You do want to make sure that the pin that goes through that axle shaft is even on both sides. Otherwise it won't fit into that slot. And just set it aside. This is a good indication that you've got the spool running right. It should spin nice and free and easily once it's inside there. Okay, let's come over and service the side that uh, well might be hanging down as well. Another bearing here. We have our uh, anti-reverse system on this. Sometimes you're going to find on this reel that you have a um, a little uh, ring holding those in. In this case, they're, they're not being held in. This is your pinion gear coupler and your gear. That square part on this coupler is going to run into that section right there. We have a micro screw here that's holding on the back shield for the main gear, so that'll be next. Driver. I think there's only one screw. There might be one on this side too. Actually, this side is being held in by the frame screw. So, again, take a picture before you get started. <clears throat> that way, if something jumps out at you, well, you're not totally confused or wondering what happened where. Take a picture here as well so that uh, you get the orientations. And then we're going to push that main gear out and and through. This is a single speed reel and now we'll do a little bit of cleanup on the case. So the small format lever drive reels really did not come into play until braid was introduced. Braid gives you a lot more strength and a lot more capacity in a smaller format and well once that happened everybody who had these big reels to support 50 pound mono monofilament and the like, just trade it down. And it's kind of made fun. It's uh, now you can use light tackle in places where, well, you used to have traditionally heavier tackle. That bearing runs fine. We're going to do the same thing with the back bearing here. I'm going to apply some oil onto it. Check the teeth on the main gear. These are uh, got a little old grease in there. So, same thing we were going to do with that. Um, Drag washer, do it on the gears. Pull through to clean out any debris. Leave a paper towel under it so that you can uh, wipe away and not get it on your work surface. And uh, well, you could push this through if you like. There's not much going on there. It's just a solid shaft. Make sure that when you close it up, there is no gap between the back washer and the face of the gear. Go ahead now and take a brush. And this one relies on a double dog traditional anti-reverse. Some of your lever drag wheels are going to run on an anti-reverse clutch. In this case there's just a bushing in that case. So what you can do on that is you can put grease onto the shaft so that when it goes into the case, it, it can run smoothly. I'm going to use my glove just to spread that around a little bit. But that'll help. If you have an anti-reverse uh, clutch in here, do not do that. You don't want grease on your clutch. Okay, reinstall. Now we have the setup here for your anti-reverse dogs. I'm going to take these off just to show you in case you've taken them off. This is the pressure plate on the one side with a bearing. We can oil that bearing here. You want to make sure that your plate is clean. And these are the old style finger dogs. They have a 
slot on each side and they have a little beak that are going to set that up. The beak is going to go into the hook there. So it'll kind of run like that. And then because you have to mount them onto the two studs here, you need to kind of guess. You can, you can adjust accordingly. But one goes up, one goes down because of the mirror image effect. It'll be something like that. And then what we'll do is we'll come over here We need to uh, put our pinion gear in first. Check the teeth on the pinion gear just like you did the teeth on the main gear. Put some grease onto that. You can insert that in. This is the insert for the piece here. Goes like that. And then let's see how we do lining up, putting these things through getting them on. Looks like I missed by one tooth on the anti-reverse on this side. So I'll take that off again. It's trial and error. Lots of errors. But if you're patient, you'll do fine. Let's try that again. And you, it's best to put this in rather than trying to guide it in while you're assembling the, the side plate. Make sure it's flush all around. And let's try this again. Once those are set, we can take our side plate and reinstall that onto the main. Before we do that, just put a little bit of grease onto the shaft. And hold everything steady. You don't want to dislodge those anti-reverse dogs. Okay, so I just did two things. I put that collar back on, then I just put the handle on to hold the main gear in place. It just uh, works easier that way sometimes. And what we'll do now is we'll take the frame and we will merge that in. And now we want to line up those screw holes. Generally speaking, the, the set for the uh, main gear piece is just off to the right, but just rotate it until you find the hole. There, there we go. And we can take those torque screws and at least get one of these started. It doesn't matter which one, but get one in there so that you can relieve the pressure on your hand. I guess we got to swap the orientation on this. And once you get that one in, you can pretty much relax tension and put the other two in. Generally, I do not tighten it all the way down the first pass because I want to make sure that I have the screws aligned all the way. And we'll bring one over to this side. In order to continue. Now we can tighten them all down now that we have all three in the uh, holes and preliminary tighten. So short them down the rest of the way. Next up then is the, the uh, control arm here. has a washer on the back. Make sure you don't lose your washer as you do that. We want to take our swing arm. It goes over the rim here. There's a little beak on the back. It goes over the rim and you want to make sure you're over in free spool as you go to assemble the next step. Next part is aligning those two valleys with the two peaks. 
Take the arm off now. So just this should be able to just press down and you'll feel it seat. Then you can tighten it a little bit, just a little bit, just to make sure that the screw is holding. Now we'll go ahead and put that handle back on. And the handle tightens in the direction that you would crank. And hold that post. Next up we can put the handle nut on. Remember this one was a reverse thread. So you're going to make as if you're taking it off by turning it counterclockwise. So the trickiest piece of this is actually the setting of those dogs. Just a, I, sometimes I wonder, I'm not in the factory, I'd like to, to see how they set it in the factory. Because I always stumble a little bit, I know the alignments, I know it works, whether they do it that way or I just found a, a second way of doing it, I don't know. But that's the hardest part of this reel. Once you put that uh, handle nut on, go ahead and align it for a screw hole. There's multiple holes on this, so just keep checking. One of them eventually should line up. Looks like I'm a quarter turn. Getting that these are reverse threads. I think we got it that time. Now we have our little screw that's. Going to hold that down. It's a tapered. I put a little dab of grease to get that screw started and holding it kind of. Let's see if we can't get that in there. Okay. So right now we should have it where the spool in free spool spins freely. Well that solves that issue, doesn't it? In uh, prime time, it's all done before this was turning. Now we want to do our, our preset to make sure that you have the strike capabilities right. So let's bring this up, see how we did. Well, we're actually in uh, over tight mode at the moment. That's kind of interesting. So back it off a little bit. Bring it up for your first strike. And bring it over for your full strike. Oh, we are almost now, I think, I think we're probably perfect. We're very close to it. Bring that back. I think we still might be a little bit tight. Casting mode. First strike. Second strike. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Always adjust your your reel in free spool. Don't uh, don't bring it up here to first strike and say you know what it's it's not really holding tight and start cranking here. That could damage the uh, the internal mechanism. So always bring it over to your free spool. Well, there you go. We found out what the problem was with this reel. It was all kinds of broken line uh, wedged into the spool. That's been corrected, and uh, this reel's ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed working on it, and hopefully you've learned a little bit about the reel. And if you have one, you've learned how to service it yourself. Uh, to our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. We really do appreciate your dedication to task and your career choice. To everyone. Enjoy the art of real repair. Never stop learning. Always start uh, with an inquisitive mind and uh, ask a lot of questions about uh, how the reels work and uh, you'll have a lot of fun along the way. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.